All right, gang, we got a lot of stuff to do now, so let's get to it. Right now it is 7.33 a.m., so let's see how much we can kick out. All right, first up on the docket, let's take a look at this one. So this issue is that the color selectors in the lobby have this weird shading issue, and I don't know if you guys can see it, but like on the sides here, it's kind of fading and it looks weird. That was interesting. Perfect. So it's because of how we're slicing this sprite, and I guess if we just turn it into a circle, that gets rid of it. And it doesn't look that bad either. Pixels per unit multiplier of 7, so it's more rounded. Boom. Done. All right. Done. Okay, for this one, I cleverly named it Bots Can't Hit Buttons. You can get soft locked into the game if you as the player die and there's only bots left on the screen and the existing bots are on opposite sides of a closed gate. They aren't smart enough to go find a button. They just keep trying to find a path to each other, but they can't because everything is blocked. So let's take a look at that. Let's go into the enemy logic. So if we have a nav target position, but we can't reach it, then we're going to find all all of the buttons on the map and then we're going to loop over those until we find one that we can reach and then we're going to override our target position to the buttons position and that should do it so let's test it out and now you're going to the button why I'm right here he's going straight to the button because he can't get to anybody and now here he comes they seem almost intelligent okay except for that <laughs> All right, we're going to count that one as done. Bots can't hit buttons, now they can. Boom. Moving on. This one should be super fast. We just want to lessen the max zoom level. Because I was getting some complaints when there's only two tanks left and they get close together. The camera zooms in on them. It can be hard to tell what is surrounding you. Oh, I should toggle this in the options too. And add options to disable. Calling an audible. So we're gonna lessen the max zoom level and then we're going to add the option to disable it entirely. Keep camera in view of objects. I hate this script. So much math and garbage. This is too close from what I've heard from people. So what if we went, yeah, I think 29 is pretty good. So let's just do that. Bam, I thought we were gonna be done, but I also think that we need to add an option for disabling the zoom entirely. Now we need to add it to our localization dock and we'll call it camera zoom and change our loc key to be there we are, camera zoom. All right, we are zooming in now. Camera zoom, it says it's off, but it should be on. Now I toggled it on and it's off, which is hilarious, um, but it's working. And this one is done. Okay, so this is an interesting one. Significantly reduce power-up costs. Because what I found in every play test is that people never not even once got enough coins to buy the premium level power-ups. And I found that people never held on to their coins. They would much rather buy something cheap. The thing that I'm trying to figure out is if I should reduce the price or increase the amount of coins that spawn on a map. I think I'm gonna do a little of both. Okay, and I just hard-coded these. So if it's common, it will start off at two coins. If it's good, it'll have three. If it's great, it'll be seven and premium is 10. Okay, these are way too difficult. Two, three, four, five, and keep the variance at three. So a premium at its cheapest could be two coins. I think that's great. Let's go with it. And then the other thing is the coin spawners. Okay, so it's between three and 10 seconds. Let's say the minimum time would be like one and the max would be like five. This will probably take some more playtesting and tweaking, but I would rather err on the generous side and make sure that people can get a lot of coins and buy more upgrades because most people couldn't buy hardly anything. They could maybe afford one. Yeah, I like this. There's so many coins. Yep, I love it. All right, so I have seven coins and I can buy anything. Fantastic, and a two coin turret, boom. So we want to delay when bots can shoot and use equipment because right now they use their equipment at the very start of the round. 
and they shoot as soon as the round starts. And then this one, it's caused by the same thing because they shoot their explosive bullet and then they shoot a normal bullet and it just blows up in their face. And then this one, bots shouldn't use power-ups after the round ends. So let's do all three of those right now. So our next equipment usage wait duration is not going to be set until we are marked as ready. So if we do not have a round in progress, then we return. Okay, that should take care of all three of those things. Let's try it out. Haha, <laughs> nobody's doing anything. Oh, there we go. It's a good sign when you're trying to work on your game and you just get distracted playing it. So this is fixed. This is fixed. And this is fixed. Nice job. Okay, so for this next bug, the game can get into a soft lock on the lava level if bots are on different islands. So let me show you what I'm talking about here. So these platforms rotate once the game starts. So they're constantly revolving and allow for dynamic bridges between different islands. And so if you have a, an enemy over here and an enemy over here and they're behind cover and they can't see each other, then they have no way to kill each other and it soft locks the game. So what I'm going to do is I'm still going to keep revolving bridges, but I'm also going to install permanent bridges that don't move because I think the game will be more fun that way. You and you, we are going to flag them as static, bake this again, and now we have a way to always get in between. Okay, so we have our moving platforms on the inside and we have our permanent platforms on the outside and this one is done. Boom. So for this bug, I'll show you what happens, but basically you're allowed to pause and quit before the round starts and it enables the countdown sequence in the lobby, which is kind of funny. So I'll show you what I'm talking about here. And then as soon as it starts, see I paused and I shouldn't be able to pause right now, but if I go down to quit, it sends me back to the lobby and then you'll see, but you can still hear the sound effects of the countdown sequence. So these are all of the conditions uh, where we're not allowed to pause the game. But now let's do if is loading scene then return. So that should do it. That's a pretty easy fix. Let's try it out. Good. I can't pause yet. One, go. And now I can. Beautiful. Guys, we did it. I should be able to hit the start button to resume the pause. Let's do that too while we're here because the start button should pause and unpause the game. So on the base menu let's also override request pause and we will do so we go up here this is our input system see in the player actions we have pause and in the ui action we do not so let's paste it in here and we're going to call it unpause and save that i never realized how complicated everything is that I'm working on until I try and explain it while I'm recording. And there's just so much context that it's probably very confusing for everybody and probably not interesting. So sorry about that. Perfect. So now we can hit the start button to get out of the option screen. And then the pause screen, you can either hit continue or the B button or the start button. That is done. I think we can count this one as completed. Okay, I think this one will be kind of fun. We need to configure how often we want to go to the shop. Currently, it's hard-coded into the game. Every two levels that you play, you will go to the shop. But I want that configurable. This is perfect. I already set this up. Oh, I'm so good to myself. I love Past Thomas. He's the best. So right now, we can configure the number of rounds that you need to win. I think we cap it at 12. And then we have the gameplay mode that you're playing. And right now, there are two gameplay modes. There's free-for-all and there's teams. So now, we want to add another field for how often we want to visit the shop. Okay, so a new menu option, and it's going to be shop appearance, store appearance frequency. Set this, set this. Okay, that's it for the menu logic. First, let's switch the gameplay mode to be at the top. There we go. And let's duplicate this. So to do that, let's go to our localization dock. Uh, we'll call it store frequency. Okay, now it says rounds between shop visits. I already have code for conditionally hiding and showing menu options, and that is in the options menu. The way that these values are lined up is driving me absolutely bonkers. <laughs> so we need to figure out how to fix that. Okay, free for all, teams, number of rounds to win, shop enabled, on. Now it's off, now it's on, now it's off, now it's on. 
So I think it's working exactly how we want, but the way that this menu's laid out is really bugging me. I want everything on the left, left aligned, and I want everything on the right, right aligned. So padding on the left. Oh my gosh, this looks so much better. So now we can pull this up and this is done. Here we go. This one's very easy. Ensure all secondary colors are different than primary ones. So basically for this one, I want to make sure that even if you pick the same color for your primary and secondary color in the lobby, that they don't look exactly the same. All right, so let me show you what I'm talking about here. So when I join in, I can pick my color. See, these are the exact same color. So I have something what I call the material database. Basically, that just gives me all of the primary and secondary colors. Purple, I wanted to go a little bit darker. There we go. Oh yeah. Black's good. Purple could be more exaggerated still. Need a bit more contrast. So now all of the secondary colors are a bit darker. All right, so we can call this one done. Okay, so this was one that I saw multiple people do that play tested my game and they thought that what was a vertical pillar was a horizontal bridge. And because I'm using an orthographic camera, it makes it a little confusing. So let me show you what that looks like. So this is the level. And so you can see there are these wooden bridges that connect these white pillar platforms. But if you look right here, this pillar, people keep trying to drive across this because look at how it appears in the game view. So this is how it looks. People just assume that this is something that they can go drive on. There's a couple different ways that I could fix this. I was thinking about actually putting a bridge there so you could drive across it, but I kind of like how this is laid out. So what I'm gonna do instead is change these to wider top platforms and then try and make this a bit more obvious that you you can't drive on it. Maybe we just do that. I think that's pretty good. It's fine. They can all be levitating. I really don't care that much. That minimizes the confusion and was pretty easy to implement. So we'll call that one done.